So you ready for a lot of statistics? <laughs> okay. Uh, these remarks uh, will not be about the state of NOACA address. I will use this. I won't use this time to talk about the many accomplishments of the agency. We've been publishing it uh, for some time now, and uh, the documents are available everywhere. Reports are on the website, and uh, I hope that you use the opportunity to uh, to check them all out. Uh, my remarks today will be more personal. Uh, before going further, I do have a little commercial. I want to note that the excellent work of the agency has guided public infrastructure investments in ways that have helped the economy, improved the quality of life, and aided safety. In my almost 24 years at NOACA, I've had the good fortune to work with an exceptional staff, uh, dedicated technical committees, as well as a wise and savvy board. Any success I've personally enjoyed is due to their effort and good work. Many of you know that I have a hobby of drawing cartoons, something I've done since I was a kid. As I reminisce about uh, my, my time at NOAC, I'll use some of the cartoons to illustrate my thoughts. My life in transportation was probably determined long before I became a city planner and long before I came to NOAC. I spent my time growing up in Mayfield Heights. In the 1950s and early 1960s, the big news was the interstate coming through town. The potential for land use changes, population growth, and economic development were regular topics of conversation at our dinner table. My dad was on the mayor's advisory committee. Uh, the interstate was also a topic in some of my classes at school, and believe it or not, among my friends. Yes, my friends and I were kind of nerdy. So. Here you see my friend Dave and I who were delivering a load of uh, hot dogs and hot dog buns to his dad's restaurant. We were brand new drivers traveling on a brand new stretch of I-271. You'll note the car, a 1959 Plymouth Fury had huge tail fins as well as, as well as lots of steel and chrome. The car guzzled gas and polluted the air. Did we like that? Well, uh, we actually didn't know what it meant. We were just happy to have wheels. Anyway, a gust of wind came along and blew the hot dogs and buns out of the back seat. The dogs and buns were strewn all over the interstate. So we stopped the car on the roadway, picked up all the hot dogs and buns, put them back in the car, and delivered them. Now, if you were to stop on the interstate today, you'd be killed in an instant. Then there was no traffic. You can imagine the you know, interstate highway with no traffic on it. Um, we were free to drive carelessly, unfortunately. Incidentally, I've rarely had a hot dog since then. <laughs> So let's fast forward to 1989. Uh, I was a relatively new employee, hired just four months earlier to be the director of special projects. One, uh, the day of the February board meeting, I stumbled into work soaked with slush and dripping with snow. Paul Alcinas greeted me and said the steering committee wanted to meet with me. I couldn't imagine why. Is Paul still here? No, okay. At the meeting, I was asked if I would serve as the agency's acting executive director, pending the results of an investigation into the then executive director. I said, yes, I'll do anything to help the agency. In the back of my mind, however, I was expecting that he would return in a few weeks, fire me, and that I would be nothing more than a footnote in NOACA history. It didn't turn out that way, but back then, no one associated with the agency had any idea of what the future would hold. Incidentally, that evening, when I was about to go home, my car wouldn't start. I had a laugh. The day I became responsible for transportation planning in five counties, I couldn't get home. <clears throat> so together, board and staff, we went through a strategic planning process that resulted in a revamping of the agency. Our primary goal was to make NOACA worthy of public support. Our work had to be open, above board, and transparent. Other goals included striving to restore funding, give federal and state agencies a sense of confidence in us so we can be effective partners, make local governments willing to participate in the agency, create the plans and programs that would move the region forward, and to take the trauma away from being associated with NOACA. To accomplish these lofty goals, we refocused the agency to deal with transportation, air quality as related to transportation, and water quality. We got out of the consulting business, uh, reorganized staff functions, upgraded technology, developed a more transparent and user-friendly financial reporting system, 
and generally reorganize the process of decision making. The most difficult aspect was how to reorganize the board structure. Much of the strategic planning went smoothly, but the reorganization of the board membership was very difficult. It took more than a year to achieve. In recognition of the increasingly important role of public transit in metropolitan transportation planning, NOACA made sure that the Greater Cleveland RTA had a seat on the governing board. This was unusual among MPOs nationwide back then. I remember my MPO colleagues complaining about dealing with their transit agencies. With pride, I was able to say we got along well and even had a seat for transit at the board. I did this drawing of early mass transit to have some fun with the subject. No, I'm not promoting any evolutionary theories, just having some fun. Hunter Morrison, there's Hunter someplace, uh, then planning director for the city of Cleveland, was board president for much of this process. He often referred to his experience as president as opening the door to Fibber McGee's closet. Fibber McGee was an old time radio show for those who don't uh, know the reference. Every time Fibber opened the door, the radio audience was treated to the rattling and banging of all kinds of stuff falling out. As part of the process, we went through a redrafting of the Code of Regulations, and Hunter is holding a copy of them. Tom Corrigan, who was our attorney at the time and a key drafter of the Code, is here today as well. There's Tom. I was formally appointed Executive Director in January of 1991. By then, the agency had resolved many of its issues. The investigations went on for several more years, but we were able to get on with business. Collecting dues became a little easier, and we were able to go out in public again. 1991 was also the year the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act, known as ICE-T, was enacted, and the Clean Air Act amendments were approved. The legislation gave MPOs greater responsibilities, encouraged multimodalism, called for more public involvement, provided additional funding and more authority for our plans and programs. Here I am, already bald, but my remaining hair is dark, I'm thinner than I am today. I have a serious look on my face and I'm supplied with a clipboard and a pen. No cell phones and iPads in those days. The drawing symbolizes the fact that transportation is based on national laws which offer policies, regulations, and funding sources. As the investigation and trials went on, articles continued to appear about the agency and the foibles of our now former executive director. I was very thin-skinned about reporting, the reporting of NOACA's work, and frankly, I still am. But we all did our best to be cooperative. One day, I asked the plain dealer reporter who covered us when he was going to write an article about the reforms and good work we were doing. I reminded him that we made decisions that helped put millions of dollars into Northeast Ohio's infrastructure. Before I got any further, he sneered, infrastructure? The only time we care about infrastructure is if it blows up or falls down. <laughs> Former Cuyahoga County Commissioner Tim Hagan, board president in the mid-1990s, had a right, the right attitude about such things. He'd say, don't worry about it. It's only show business. In subsequent years, the, <laughs> it's true, <laughs> the Plain Dealer and other media outlets actually covered some of our infrastructure issues. I believe the public should be aware of the importance of our work, our limitations, unfortunately, the complexity of our responsibilities, and the efforts needed to make decisions. I did have one incident worth noting of a different nature. One day, after a contentious board meeting, Plain Dealer reporter Rich Exner, who had inherited the Noaka beat, came up to me. I was expecting him to ask some questions about the resolutions that had been passed or to clarify some technical matter. Instead, he said, I noticed that you're always drawing. We want to do a story on that. I was skeptical, but agreed. Uh, we set up a time for him to come in and, and look over my notebooks, which by then had about 400 completed drawings in them. He skimmed them politely and then noticed the doodles I had on my desk blotter. He said, those are the drawings I want to focus on. The article which appeared in the now defunct Sunday magazine was entitled The Doodle King. The response was tremendous. For a full year, I received copies of the article, calls, emails, and even real letters about it. All were very positive and gratifying. And uh, we included some more <laughs> desk blotter doodles. So when I'm talking to you on the telephone, that's usually what I'm doing. <laughs> Just to get. Uh, that kind of response never happened when I was interviewed or discussed anything technical, financial, or governmental in nature. 
I could talk about the media all morning, but it's time to move on to other matters. I'll focus on some events, but they'll be illustrated with drawings I did of our former board presidents at the conclusions of their term. Dave Anderson, mayor of Willoughby, was board president in 1998. As always, we dealt with a variety of complex and contentious issues. But Dave worked hard at developing consensus, hence the harmony theme in the drawing. And Dave really does play the guitar. During board meetings, I was certainly involved with every item on the agenda. But I generally kept quiet unless a specific issue required me to comment. Dave suggested that I make a report to the board every month. So you have him to blame for me giving the for, for me having the floor at every board meeting. By the late 1990s, NOACA was in search of another home. Every 10 years since the agency's inception, NOACA lost its lease and was forced to find new quarters. This time, we decided to purchase our own building. It was not an easy decision, by the way. Finding an app location was difficult. And believe it or not, there was debate about where this building should be located. But it was finally concluded uh, officially that downtown Cleveland was really the downtown of the region. We settled on 1299 Superior Avenue, at the time a vacant former furniture store. With financing from the Cleveland Cuyahoga County Port Authority, the blessing of our federal and state funders, we purchased the building and renovated it for our needs. We've been there now for 13 years, and in six years, NOAC will own it. We have all the issues of home ownership, but it's great to have our own place. Staff members Steve DeJohn and Cheryl Konkowski and board members Betty Blair, Hunter Morrison, Neil Hofstetter, Skip Trimble, Jerry Ruby, Jane Campbell, and Tim Hagen were really the drivers of getting us into the building. Ultimately, all staff members were involved in the process. The next slide is a photo of the building with the signage superimposed on it. In order to get approval, I had to meet with the Design Review Committee of the Cleveland Planning Commission. One of the members looked at it quizzically and commented on the load of information it contained. NOACA, Planning for Greater Cleveland, Counties of Cuyahoga, Jaga, Lake Lorraine, and Medina. I explained that a board of 38 elected and appointed officials from five, from five counties wanted that sign, and it was approved immediately. Uh, but uh, I was a little worried for a moment. Here's a drawing of former board president Jerry Ruby, standing in front of the, of a, the building portrayed as the Magic Kingdom. A banner is flying from its top spire with the inscription, NOACA World Headquarters. He's saying, Mickey Mouse, say, he's saying, Noaka may be goofy sometime, but it's no Mickey Mouse operation, and, and Mayor Ruby is a big Walt Disney fan. Hunter returned as president in 2000. As planning director for the, for the city of Cleveland, he was involved in virtually all aspects of the building. Hence, the Hunter approved stickers on everything, including the hot dog vendor, who is still stationed in front of the building. As you know, NOAC has been involved in many major transportation issues over the, year, over the years. They're almost too numerous to mention by name, but one project worth a special note, however, is the Euclid Corridor Transportation Project, now known as the Health Line. NOAC had major involvement in the project going back to the days when it was called the Dual Hub. NOAC worked with the uh, RTA and the, the City of Cleveland on the original alternatives analysis, the very extensive modeling process, planning and design issues, discussions with Federal Transit Administration, the public at large, as well as a host of advocates, naysayers, and the curious. One day, back in 2002, Chris Ronane, who was by then the planning director for the city of Cleveland, asked if NOACA could use its uh, congestion mitigation air quality funds, CMAC, for the last $10 million needed to complete funding for the project. Because of the controversies relating to the project, the changes it would bring to the traffic patterns, the potential disruptions, the new technologies, and other factors, this was not a simple request. But we went forward with the proposal. After the reviews, analyses, and committee recommendation, the proposal went to the board. Neil Hofstetter was president that year. Much debate ensued. In the end, the board unanimously voted to support the project. I was very pleased with the decision. NOACA's financial support made the Health Line not only a reality, but a truly regional project. Today, the Health Line is a showcase, has more riders than expected, and is the model of how bus rapid transit can work. And if you take a look at the photos, uh, there's me, Joe, and there's Grace Colucci. <laughs> uh, uh, Cheryl Odesky found this photo someplace, and I'm, I'm glad you did. 
As part of any presentation of my life in the WACA, I need to say something about the Inner Belt and the Inner Belt Bridge. You are all aware that the project will be the most uh, complex and expensive public works project in Ohio's history. I don't have to say anything more about the funding issues that it faces today. You could, there are plenty of articles, and, uh, and I, it looks like uh, the, the funding is moved up once again, so that's good news. Uh, NOAC has been involved in various aspects of the project from the beginning. We've been involved in the quest for funding uh, and other aspects of the project. Craig Heberbrand of ODOT regularly updates the board on progress. And was, I saw Craig here earlier. There he is. Among other activities, I was involved in a committee that looked at various ideas for the design of the bridge. The term signature bridge was used extensively. The committee wanted to make sure the bridge had a look to it that was unique to our city and our region. I thought I'd have, a, I'd have a little fun with it and asked myself, what is the symbol of Cleveland? As a sometime cartoonist, I had to go with Superman. Superman, the man of steel, was created here in the city of steel. So I drew a cartoon of Superman holding the bridge. Uh, this was a doodle, actually, at a meeting. Uh, the drawing was a bit of whimsy, but I was surprised that uh, Bill Barrow of the Cleveland State Memory Project scaled it out and showed that it could work, at least as a concept. Anyway, the idea, Craig, the idea is there, and uh, you at ODOT and all the others should be able to consider it. <laughs> Can you imagine you know, a giant cape billowing in the wind as the cars go by? That's, that's, that's a... Anyway, I like the idea. <laughs> Uh, Betty, Betty Blair, retired Lorraine County Commissioner, had a couple of terms as board president. During her first term, the agency dealt with a contentious I-90 issue. It seems we were always, always dealing with contentious I-90 issues. Uh, following a Gary Larson theme, in the drawing, Betty and I are slightly lost. You could be sure she was needling me the entire time. Dan Troy was board president in 2004 the year in which George W. Bush and John Kerry ran for the presidency of the United States. Bush and Kerry argued and debated forcefully, but they agreed on one thing, that Dan Troy was a great NOACA board president. After it was finished and framed, I noticed that I gave Bush six fingers. Well, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm a cartoonist, not a medical illustrator. <clears throat> the most contentious project however, was the Avon interchange proposal. We knew it would be controversial from the moment it was proposed. Bob Brown was president during much of the deliberations and ultimately a decision was made. The project caused the agency no end of grief at every level, but we all did our best with it. Inside Business Magazine published a story on the subject and illustrated it with the drawing of Avon Mayor Smith and me wrestling over a section of highway. Now, I didn't do this drawing. Uh, frankly, it was quite strange to be on the receiving end of a caricature. I'm usually the one doing the drawing the caricatures, not the one getting lampooned, but there it was. One of the issues that came out of the Avon Interchange Project was how to resolve uh, a very contentious provision in our code for, uh, that called for weighted voting in certain circumstances. When former mayor Bill Grace of Illyria was president, he solved the problem with a, with a new structure. His proposal eliminated weighted voting, but added permanent seats for the Cleveland Cuyahoga County Port Authority, the Medina County Engineer, and the cities of Cleveland Heights, Euclid, Parma, and Lakewood. The idea met with almost immediate approval, hence the drawing of Bill Grace slashing the Gordian knot. As board president, Jaga County Commissioner Mary Samiti decided to meet with individual board members in their home communities. I went with Mary to those meetings. I think both Mary and I enhanced our appreciation for the diversity and beauty of, of this region as we went from uh, meeting to meeting and place to place. The process took almost an entire year, but was well worth it. Following the board meeting in Jaga County, Mary arranged for Amish buggy rides for members. Mary added a new dimension to the term multimodal. <laughs> In 2010, Lake County Engineer Jim Gills was our board president. I had a hard time coming up with an idea for Jim, but finally cooked up the Jim Gills equation, which focused on his mathematical skills. Uh, the drawing shows the Jim Gills presidency equaling a lot of pluses, including 
a long-range plan update, and the successful application to HUD for the Sustainable Communities Grant. The only minus item in the, uh, in the equation was the resolution of appreciation to Jimmy DeMora to the infinite power. You may remember that the resolution, a simple thank you for serving on the board, was removed from the agenda. But the whole thing caused a media kerfuffle and frankly was my first experience with uh, online comments following articles. Uh, I was not a happy camper after that experience. <laughs> Uh, I guess I, I was used to criticism, but I wasn't used to lies, <laughs> and that was there. Okay, the online comments. It's, that's the world we live in today. Uh, 2011 was Steve Hambly's third presidency for NOACA. Actually, not only are, you know, online comments, but they're anonymous. <laughs> it just really <laughs> makes me go batty. And I'm sure it makes guys like Mike McIntyre go batty too, right? <laughs> okay. 2011 was Steve Hambly's third presidency for NOACA. As usual, he approached his term with fairness and thoughtfulness. Steve is a historian, so I incorporated some historical references into the drawings I did for him. In the last drawing, I went back to the Superman theme. This time, the caption read, faster than a tabled resolution, more powerful than a budget report. He's a commissioner. He's a professor. He's NOACA's super board president. Steve is a professional historian. So, uh, and I like reading books about American and world history, so Steve and I have a two-person book club. So if any of you want to join, you know, let me know. I don't have a drawing yet for Ed Jers, and I'm sure he's happy about that. But I could have one for you next January. Uh, I have to say that I've enjoyed working with Ed Jers a great deal. He's honorable, knows governmental process, and understands the importance of regional cooperation. I'm sure that Grace Gallucci will enjoy the benefits of working with Ed, who is certainly uh, an engaged and intelligent board president. I've been fortunate to have a wonderful wife uh, and family who've supported me through thick and thin. My wife, Sue, is here now and should stand up and be recognized. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's really something, you know, for you know, the 20, almost 24 years at NOACA, you know, virtually every night, I would tell her about things that took place at NOACA. So in retirement, I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I have to figure something out. Uh, a new adventure. Uh, my mother, who will be 90 on July 4th, will join us for lunch later. My kids, now adults, never took me too seriously and, in fact, had their own fun with me. I found this Father's Day drawing that they did back in 1989. It shows me sitting in a fancy chair with a sign that says Big Cheese on it. On the desk are the in and out baskets that, they, that say cheesy, cheesier, and cheesiest. Uh, with that kind of respect, it was guaranteed that I would never get a swelled head. To further illustrate that point, when my youngest son, Mike, was about 10, I brought him to the office uh, to spend the day. So he wanders around the office and uh, he's talking to all the staff members. And of course, by being the boss's son, everybody was especially nice to him. So uh, at the end of the day, as we were getting ready to go home, I said, so Mike, what did you think? Did you like it here? And he said, yeah, Dad, it's really interesting. Everybody does really interesting work. Well, everybody except for you. Yeah. Yeah. All you do is talk on the phone and go to meetings. What kind of job is that? Uh, yeah, actually, in, in that particular study, is now in Honolulu. He's uh, a musician with the Hawaiian Symphony. So I, I now have a grandson uh, who is now all of three and a half. He will grow up to be multimodal. Here are some drawings I've done for him. Uh, these subjects, by the way, are at his request. He's always the driver, of course. And I, you know, I think I have about 50 of them. Uh, these are drawings of him you know, driving vehicles, construction equipment, all the things that... Even I, I even have on a surfboard. Um, oh, and of course, there's even a drawing of him driving the, a, a van from the uh, Senior Transportation Connection. Uh, on one of their trips, we stopped by there uh, on the way back to the airport, and, uh, and uh, Janice uh, Ziegel was kind enough to let him sit behind the wheel. So there he is driving the van. Uh, he lives in Vermont with my daughter and son-in-law, but I'm proud to say my grandson knows the Ohio State fight saw. In conclusion, 
I once again thank all of you for indulging me in this presentation. I want to thank all of you for your support and advice over the years. Together, we've met the goals established back in the early 1990s. Today, NOACA is worthy of public trust. Our work is done openly, above board, and with transparency. I'm proud of our collective accomplishments and hope you are too. I'm certain you'll give Grace Gallucci the same support uh, and consideration that you've given to me. Thank you again. This is the day we say thanks to Howard. He certainly had an interesting career. And I, you know, when he said that he went home every night and, and talked about Noaka business, I thought it's remarkable that you stayed married for this many years. <laughs> um, I, I do want to uh, give Howard the traditional pen uh, award, but I. Uh, it's nice to get one. <laughs> yes. Uh, I also have a special gift. Uh, this is a key to the region. A very nice. Uh, we don't give a key to the city, we give a key to the region. I understand that. Uh, you started a tradition of giving these keys to the summit key keynote speakers, and we wanted you to have one as well. I tell you they're going to change the lock July 1st, so you better use it while you can. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to getting my picture drawn by Howard. I, I understand he's going to stay in the business, and I hope he's kind to me. So congratulations, Howard. Thank you. Thank you.